Okay, here we are. Video. This is the. This is the county. Look at all the things. No. Just need to look at any. This is the city. Okay. Um, I'm happy to take down your information. Okay. Okay, we're here for the free stuff. Ooh, what really got free stuff? Oh, the good, what, really what it is, what it be. Oh my god. Uh, it's a pen. You're the, a hero. Uh, hero, I'm a hero. Yeah, uh, you've been our hero forever. Yeah, I, I don't like that because it you know, goes with the hero. You know <laughs> dead, dead heroes. I don't want to be a dead hero, you know. Sure, sure, okay, sure. all right. It's all free. Take whatever you want. Take whatever. You need, I'll, you need a new pen? Oh, I gotta have that pen. That that is special pen. You know what I'm saying there. Okay. And what, what, what's free stuff over here? What's the, the uh, county some, assessor? Yeah, yes, yes, great things. one. Yeah. We got to bow to the assessor. <laughs> what, what, what what's this we have here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you assess that property, you gotta have. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Take information. Okay. We have a really cool program that we're promoting. It's the appraiser assistant program at Rio Honda College. It's a good career pathway for anyone who's interested. Do, in do they take old folks? Yeah, anybody With, can No apply. age limitation. All you have to do is pass these four classes, <laughs> and you get a certificate to apply for the position. Hallelujah! Now I'll just take some no dose so I could stay awake <laughs> for the class, and, and we're we're looking good. Put grab them in classes. little bags to put yes. them. Stuff into. Hey, thank you very much. I, now I have to say good things about you. Okay. Look at this here. Okay, got to put it on pause here. Okay. Ready for a flood? You say ready for a flood? No, I mean, is that what he said? To prepare for a flood. Yeah. Oh my God! Okay. Here in Roland Heights, you got to get ready for the flood. Okay, Asian Youth Center. Well, I think I passed the youth thing a long time ago. No, we have a lot of different programs. Yes. Would you like to search your name, phone number? Uh, it, it, it all, we will never call you or text you. It's just that our sponsor now are getting the goodies, so they can keep donating us. Uh, keep donating. Well, I have my secretary uh, take okay. So you want me to sign for you? Yeah, so just sign. There, okay. Yeah. What is okay, how are we doing, guys? Uh, no gold coins here today. What's going on? We're going to have some gold coins. I'll even do silver. You know what I mean. I'm easy. Okay, here we are. Okay. Who's going to lead the rioters today? We got to have riot an insurrection. That's what happened. You go to my you, you know who I am. Go to YouTube. Type in Roy Humphreys, Roland Heights, Barroom. You could be my 342nd subscriber. Yes. Okay, consumer. I want to go over here. This this is where you go for affairs. If you want to have an affair, you come over here, right? Is that okay? And you, and you know what they say about uh, about county planning, right? You know what they say about them? They haven't got a clue, let alone a plan. Oh, <laughs> that you can quote me on that. No, I'm kidding. Don't get excited here. Okay. Like to grab anything. Oh my goodness! Now you're, you're com is this a, a measuring device? It is. Oh my yeah. goodness! I must have this other because you're competing with your guys over the, at the assessors. You know they got oh, but they don't uh, have they don't have they the don't protein. Have, they don't have food. Yeah, that's right. I hear this nutrition because after about hour one, I need some something to oh, yeah, keep, need, keep me awake. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. You need a little energy boost. Yeah. You know this guy named James Yang? You ever heard of him? I think so. Paul, the politician. So, Al Alhambra office. Oh. Yeah. He's uh, responsible for all the uh, the regional planning, or or you're in, you're in planning. He's in public works. Oh, okay, excuse me. Okay, no, no problem at all. No. I'm not familiar with him, but yeah, okay. Building once. Yes, so okay. So if anything's wrong, you just James Yang. He lives in Rolling Heights, by the Thank way. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know that. Okay, biz business and consumer affairs. What have we got? The library. 
Okay. Department of Economic Opportunity. Okay. And what are we doing here? This is media. Vestetic. Yeah. If I could say it, I guess I could do it, right? <laughs> yeah, so we are a, a community legal aid organization. Legal aid. Mm -hmm. So free lawyers that assist oh. in a variety of areas. Well, you, uh, I don't know if you're aware of what transpired here. <laughs> no. But two, two nights ago and on the 4th, there are people good, uh, looking for some legal aid to take care of this uh, 7th Avenue intervention over here. You go on my YouTube channel. Roy Humphreys, Roland Heights, you see it all. Insurrection, how to do it right. Okay, American Job Center. Okay. Now, may maybe you can help, help me out here. You know, I'm, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. You know what I'm saying here? Uh, but if we have all of these jobs, I'm seeing jobs and jobs and jobs, how can there be anybody collecting unemployment? I don't understand. Can you, can you help me here again? <laughs> and maybe we better talk to the lawyer. How does this happen here? Okay, thank you very much. I want to tell you, you'll be happy. Roland Heights waking up. Five people from Roland Heights come Five up. people from, you, no, that, that's yeah, where neighbors. you know you're in trouble when the Roland Heights people show up. That, that, that's like waking the dead. You yeah, know what they, I'm they saying? Usually, they don't want to get involved. <laughs> they just want to make me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Here we are. Everything around. Yeah, uh, five. Five of them. She, how, she did, just how did you know there were five? Well, because she just she's in line right there. Uh -huh. So they were Chinese. So there's uh, two young girls yeah. Chinese. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, so I heard that you speak Chinese, so I started Chinese. Okay. And that's all. all right. So I'm putting this. Okay. There's uh, Ryan Serrano. Just stole that guy's table. <laughs> <laughs> now, now the goodies are all, that's all Hilda Solis's budget, right? Hilda Solis pop for the, the cinnamon buns and, and coffee? We did not know. No, it's sponsored by McDonald's. Yeah. A donation? Uh, I got to, because I thought that was out of the Hilda Solis budget there. Who is sponsored this? McDonald's. McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's. So the food came from the restaurant right here on on Gale. Uh, what do I have to do to get you to come to the Roland Heights Coordinating Council meeting and throw, throw some cinnamon buns out there? You could talk to Ryan. Ryan, Ryan has a contact. Ryan, Ryan has the contact. Oh, I I think I now I, I got it. I got it because he's trying to. Well, because, you know, they had like a couple riots here, you know, the past couple of meetings. Oh, they so they're, they're trying to sweet. Are you ready for this? Sweeten the deal. Did you get that one? Okay, guys. Cinnamon buns, guys, over here. Come on. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Courtesy of McDonald's. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Get those cinnamon buns, guys. Go for the cinnamon buns. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Interpretation services. Hopefully you picked up one of the um, headphones and dialed into the channel that will allow you to be able to have that interpretation of this presentation. So with that... I'm going to go ahead and get started. So, good evening. My name is DeAndrea Barajas. I'm an assistant treasurer and tax collector with the Department of Treasurer and Tax Collector. And I want to uh, thank Supervisor Solis's office for allowing or arranging for this um, event tonight. So, yes, thank you. Okay. So tonight, I'm going to go through a few things on the agenda. We're going to discuss a little bit of background. So since this is behind me, I'm hoping that I'll be able to coordinate with my assistant over there. So we're going to go over the background of this ordinance. We're here tonight to talk about the short-term rentals ordinance. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of background. 
talk about board objectives, and then within the proposed ordinance, we'll discuss the registration requirement, some regulations and prohibitions, some housing restrictions, and then some of the responsibilities for not only the hosting platform, like Airbnb, but also the host um, responsibilities, as well as enforcement. At the end, I was gonna talk about the timeline, but I think a lot of you are probably very interested in hearing the timeline, so for me to keep you engaged, I'll go ahead and let you know that this ordinance is um, being brought to the board in July. So it's been a, a long time coming, and so now we are pretty confident that we'll be presented to the board July um, in a couple of months. So that's the timeline, and then once I finish talking about enforcement, then I'll go over some frequently asked questions. Okay, so with that, all right. So a little bit of background on a short-term rental. So basically, a short-term rental is an accessory use of the host's primary residence. The host is the person who owns the home or is um, living in the home as their primary residence, and now they are using that for short-term rental for the purpose of compensation, but the, uh, the caveat is that short-term rental is for a period of 30 consecutive days, calendar days, or less. That's the key. Um, Short-term rentals uh, most commonly are booked through Airbnb or those types of hosting, internet hosting platforms. And they can be booked through any service, including travel sites such as Expedia or Hotwire, or directly with the host. So, continuing with our background, since March 2019, um, our Board of Supervisors adopted the motion that directs the county departments to develop an ordinance to regulate the short-term rentals in the county's unincorporated area. And that's really important because most residents don't you know, realize whether or not they're in a city or they're in an unincorporated area, but for those residents in unincorporated, the County Board of Supervisors has jurisdiction, not, your, not the city government. <clears throat> So the objectives of the short-term rental ordinance are to preserve long-term rental housing by limiting the short-term rental um, through registrations. Now, I know, you know long-term rental housing is, is a big issue, especially with our homeless um, initiatives, but the short-term rental is to is to um, conduct short-term, less than 30 days, or 30 days in, or in less uh, rentals. So we also wanna make sure that short-term rentals do not become a nuisance. So we know we realize that there's a fine line that we must observe. Um, and as I get into the presentation, we'll talk about you know some of those fine lines, but we really wanna make sure that we restrict, um, you know, we, reg we regulate the short-term rentals so that we don't have party houses, you know, things on um, Airbnb where they are um, renting to, you know, have parties and what have you. And then we also want to, when I talk about the fine line, we want to preserve, you know, the neighborhood character, um, you know, and public safety. So we want to limit party houses, we want to preserve the neighborhood um, character, uh, ensure public safety. But at the same time, we also realize that there are residents who are you, you know, looking to generate income through this process. And so that's the balance that you know, this ordinance is trying to um, you know, implement, is allowing people to generate income, but at the same time, preserving the quality uh, of the neighborhoods and the public safety. And then we also have to ensure that anyone that is um, you know, renting short-term rentals, that they pay the transient occupancy tax. And that's another term for a hotel tax. When you, you know, you, you travel and you stay in a hotel and you see, you know, that you have to pay that, um, that tax for staying in the hotel, you also have to pay that tax for the short-term rental, um, you know, to operate a short-term rental. So, looking at some of the um, proposed short-term rental terms, 
Now, based upon um, a point in time when we collected this data, there are over 1,900 short-term rentals that we estimated exist in the county's unincorporated area. With a short-term rental, it can only be the host's primary residence. And that's another one that I need to make sure that everyone is, is very clear on because you can only have one primary residence. And so you have to, to uh, define primary residence is a place where you live for at least nine months out of the year. So if you're a host, you can only rent short-term rentals from your primary residence, which is where you would live for at least nine months out of the year. So it does not allow, this ordinance would not allow for any vacation homes. So some individuals, they purchase property for the sole purpose of renting out you know, that to generate income. But in this ordinance, since it only allows for their primary residence, you would not be able to, or a host would not be able to um, use a vacation home for short-term rental. And I mentioned earlier that, you know, the transiency occupancy tax or transient occupancy tax must be paid. And that is a 12% nightly rate. The host will, um, charge that to the guest, and so it is ultimately the guest that is paying that transient occupancy tax, but the host has the responsibility to ensure that they are remitting that tax to the treasurer and tax collector. So let's talk a little bit about the registration. So every um, host that wants to uh, conduct short-term rental, um, they have to register. They have to file a list of states. So an unhosted stay means that that um, owner or that, that um, host whose primary residence is being rented for short-term rental can rent it out for short-term rental, but they're limited to do so for 90 nights per calendar year. And with each, with each rental, it has to be a minimum of a two-night stay, but the host doesn't have to be there. So earlier I said that the host has to, um, can, can rent unlimited number of nights, 12 per booking. And what that comes down to is, regardless to the number of rooms, you can't have more than 12 people that are registered to stay as a guest. But if you have less than that, then you're limited to two per bedroom plus two. So if I have a four bedroom house, and I'm renting three of those bedrooms because I'm staying in one of the bedrooms. Now I can have six plus two, two per each room and two extra. So that's the maximum if you, um, you know, based on bedrooms, but no more than 12 altogether. So if you have a mansion with, you know, 10 bedrooms or what have you, the maximum number of guests that you could rent to are 12. So we also have restrictions as it pertains to um, certain types of housing that are just already identified as rent restricted. And so that includes properties that are subject to rental housing restrictions, um, either by the deed, like you could have a situation where the, the, the short-term rental is being rented by the, um, a renter so it's not the owner of the house, but it's a renter who is, who has that as their primary residence, but they have to have an agreement from the owner of that house that would allow them to do the short-term rental. So that's why we talk about you know, restrictions by deed, or there could also be restrictions by the county or a public agency or a public authority. Also um, included in those prohibitions are properties that are subject to an agreement that provides for a housing subsidy for affordable housing. That could be a program like Section 8 um, because that's intended you know, not for generating income but for providing housing. And then there are certain properties that are exempt under the state, federal, or other administrative regulations that would also be prohibited from a short-term rental operation. Now, let's talk about accessory dwelling units. Some um, houses, you, some owners have added on, you know, to their, they build a structure in the backyard to be able to rent it out. 
Um, that's the best example, the simplest example that I could use for the term accessory dwelling unit. Um, so accessory dwelling units and any other type of accessory structure is prohibited from this short, from being used as a short-term rental in accordance with this um, draft ordinance. And so accessory dwelling units, um, the complete definition, are accessory to the principal residence. They're on the same lot and regardless to the size, they are prohibited from using as a short-term rental. Any other structure, any other accessory habit habitable structure of any kind, you got a guest house, um, a recreation room, um, tents, yurts, we gotta just make it very clear that uh, all of these things are prohibited under this short-term rentals ordinance. And the accessory dwelling unit prohibition is not um, effective as a result of this ordinance. The short-term, the uh, accessory dwelling unit uh, prohibition has been in effect since 2019 when the board adopted the accessory dwelling unit ordinance. Um, and that is also, uh, you know, part of the county code. It prohibits the use of ADUs and short-term rentals. So it's already in effect. It's not something that's being implemented as a result of this ordinance. In addition, vacation rentals. I mentioned this a little bit earlier. Um, those are prohibited from being used as a short-term rental. So anyone that purchased the house for the sole purpose of their, their vacation home, they just you know go there uh, so many weeks or months out of the year, it's not their primary residence, so it's prohibited from being utilized as a short-term rental. Um, other restrictions is that the because the host is limited only one STR, one short-term rental, and that short-term rental has to be their primary residence, that explains why vacation rentals are not allowed. So the intent of this prohibition is to preserve the residence for long-term tenancy and not STRs or short-term rental. Another objective that we want to attain is to prevent nuisances. So a nuisance would be something considered like illegal parking. I mean, sometimes residents get upset when someone is just parking in front of their house. Imagine someone, you know, now parking on the yard, on the lawn, and doing all sorts of things that are creating a nuisance. So no illegal parking, no disturbances of the peace, excessive noise, vibration. You, you sometimes you're driving down the, down the street and there's a car next to you and the music is so loud it's causing your own car to feel, you know, feel the vibration. So no excessive noise or vibration. Glares, imagine, you know, one of those disco lights or something, you're trying to sleep, it's midnight, and you've got this light flashing, you know, through your, through your curtains. Um, odors, you know, there's the marijuana, cannabis, whatever the term they're familiar with, right? Sometimes those smells, they travel, and so we're trying to prevent all of these types of nuisances as well as littering. No one wants to see trash all over their neighborhood. So this ordinance is, is trying to make sure that we make it very clear, again, that we want to maintain the character of the, um, of the neighborhood, the community. The short-term rentals um, ordinance prevents like parties and events. Um, no open invite gatherings or no advertisement of a party on social media or any kind of commercial gatherings. Those are the type of events that would normally be for a few hours and large crowds, you know, it's a commercial event or they're um, generating income. Those cannot be, um, those types of activities cannot be conducted in a short-term rental because again, we're trying to prevent nuisance. One of the requirements um, is that there is on-site parking. So if the host has parking, that parking needs to be available to the guest. So um, on-site parking, when it exists, needs to be it, it must be available to the short-term rental guest. And there's a requirement to notice your neighbors. So anyone uh, that is going to conduct the short-term rental, their neighbors 
um, will receive a notice informing them of this type of activity. And so um, there's the requirement for that notification because as I continue in the, in the presentation, you'll understand how those neighbors who may be impacted if these rules are not adhered to will be able to file a complaint. So there's also responsibilities for the hosting platform um, as well as the host. So a hosting platform like Airbnb, you know, they cannot advertise a short-term rental without there being a valid um, county short-term rental registration. And if we find that they are doing that, they'll have to remove that listing from the platform. Um, otherwise, it will be considered a violation of the short-term rental activity. Now, the host, they have to um, identify a local responsible contact that would be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week by telephone um, to the address neighborhood, to address neighborhood disturbances and potential violations. And so that's why I was saying earlier that your neighbors will receive a notice when you're providing um, short-term rentals because they need to be aware that that type of activity, if the rules are not being adhered to, that they have a contact to be able to file their complaint. And because parties sometimes don't end at nine o'clock, right? Um, they might be one or two o'clock in the morning. That's why you have to be available. That contact has to be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And then I already mentioned earlier that the host has to collect the transient occupancy tax, which is 12%. Now let's talk a little bit about enforcement. So as the host, if you um, violate, uh, you know, you find that there's a non-compliance with the code or any other law that's related to the operation of a short-term rental, the registration that we've issued to allow you to conduct that business can be revoked or suspended. In addition, there would be a $285 non-compliance fee. Um, if there is any type of uh, activity that, that causes an imminent threat to the public, to the peace, the safety, or the health of anyone, then there's an immediate suspension, uh, revocation for 30 days pending an investigation. If there's nuisance, I talked about the illegal parking, the loud noise, the vibration, the lights, the uh, aromas, um, we can file a nuisance abatement lien on, on the title. <clears throat> and then um, any violation or of any provision of the chapter, you know, can result in civil action, can re result in injunction or penalties up to $1,000 per violation per day in addition to a misdemeanor charge with a thousand dollar fine or by imprisonment in county jail for six months or both. Because we've heard on the news, sometimes there have been some pretty serious events that have occurred and we just want to deter, you know, and make the host responsible to ensure that these types of events, you know, um, don't, don't happen. Now, if a short-term rental um, is rented for less than the two night minimum, or beyond the 90-day uh, unhosted stay limit, there's a penalty that can be assessed of $2,000 per day or two times the nightly rate, so whichever is greater. So if the uh, short-term rental is renting for you know, $1,200 a night, um, some areas of the county, that's not um, unheard of, uh, even more, then you know, it's gonna be whichever is the greater of the 2,000 per day or the two times the nightly rate. Additional enforcement includes um, the host, the responsibilities for the hosting platforms. So the, uh, the violation is if they complete a booking transaction um, for each listing without ensuring that there's a valid short-term rental registration, the hosting platform can receive a fine up to $1,000 a day that that booking continues to remain on the platform. Um, if they complete a booking transaction for each listing where there's more than one short-term rental um, affiliated with the single host uh, within that unincorporated area of LA County, again, up to $1,000 per day, as well as um, completing a booking transaction, uh, transaction or any listing for a short-term rental 
where the host um, short-term rental certificate has been revoked, has been has expired or is suspended. So those are some you know pretty hefty fines, but we hope that we don't have to do that type of enforcement because everybody will be in compliance. So just um, reiterating some of the uh, enforcement tools, the fact that there's a 24-7 uh, complaint hotline as well as the neighborhood notices. Um, we will issue uh, compliance and enforcement notices. We will monitor rental activity for, you know, whether it's a host estate versus an unhost estate um, and the address as well as coordinate with um, enforcement within various county departments, including the sheriff. So I talked earlier about the timeline that we are um, planning to bring the ordinance to the board in July. And with that, um, there's a noticing requirement. So uh, with the adoption of the short-term rental ordinance, it would take effect about six months after that. But in addition to the short-term rental ordinance, there's also some provisions under Title 22, which is the um, regional planning zoning requirements. And so there would be additional time for the Department of Regional Planning to complete those updates to that their ordinance. And they would have those, they're targeting to have those completed by fall of this, of this year. And so in addition to uh, the unincorporated, I mean, the Board of Supervisors having jurisdiction over the unincorporated area, we have coastal zones. And so with the coastal zones, um, we have to get permission through the Coastal Commission. And so that takes a little bit longer. And so it's anticipated that for those residents, those short-term rentals in the coastal zones, that it may not be until January of 2024 uh, for that to go into effect. So I want to just um, briefly go over some of the more frequently asked questions because uh, we have been you know, conducting quite a bit of outreach. Um, and so we have accumulated a lot of the questions from our constituents. And so based upon what has been asked the most often, these are the questions that we've already drafted the answers for. So if your question is, is the proposed ordinance currently in effect and if it's not, when will it become the law? Well, as I stated, the ordinance is not in effect yet um, because we are proposing to, to bring the ordinance to the board, so it's not yet part of the county code. And so, again, we're gonna present it in July and the board will make the decision at that time. And once it's approved, the implementation period will take about 180 days after the effective date. Another question, can a single host have multiple or different short-term rentals listed on a hosting platform? No, the proposed ordinance restricts the short-term rental to a host's primary residence, of which the host can have only one, right? You can't claim more than one residence as your primary residence when the requirement is that you maintain um, nine months out of the year and living in that location. So, um, however, a host is free to list their primary residence for the short-term rental across multiple hosting platforms. So they can rent it on Airbnb, they can list it on VRBO, so they can list that one property on different platforms, but it can only be that one, that one primary residence. And it says a host um, may not rent their primary residence to more than one group of guests or under more than one booking at any given time. So no double bookings, because that would kind of be equivalent to renting for a few hours as opposed to an overnight stay. Um, also, will month-to-month -month rentals or other long-term residential rentals be affected by this proposed ordinance? No. Only residential rentals for 30 consecutive calendar days or less constitute a short-term rental that's governed by this proposed ordinance. So, will this ordinance address party house rentals? 
The ordinance will alleviate party house rentals by limiting the short-term rental to primary residences, requiring a minimum of two-night rental for unhosted stays to prevent the single-night party house rentals, prohibiting vacation rentals in addition to the party house prohibitions. Additionally, um, all the SDRs must have a designated local contact person. That 24 hour a day, seven days a week hotline um, by phone to be available um, is part of the short term rental program implementation. And finally, the ordinance prohibits nuisance, like I shared earlier, including neighborhood disturbances as part of the comprehensive enforcement structure. So we're really trying to maintain that balance so people are not impacted by someone's um, you know, right to generate income at their primary residence. Uh, so, who will be enforcing this ordinance? So our department, Treasurer and Tax Collector, TTC, in coordination with other county departments, um, will enforce this ordinance because it does take uh, a collaborative effort to make sure that we address whatever the concern is that's being, that's being presented. Now, as far as the fee, why is the annual, annual registration fee $914? Um, that's because this is the amount that we determined to be the reasonable cost recovery to administer the program. And so the fee is not to generate any uh, additional revenue or anything like that. It's just strictly to cover the cost for administration, for enforcement, um, for the maintenance of the registration system and for the staff that are carrying out the functions of this short-term rental ordinance. So with that, that concludes the information that I wanted to bring to you this evening. Um, as you can see, there's a QR code that will take you directly to our business license website where you would be able to um, obtain additional information, the details of the short-term rental and business license program. So with that, I want to say that some of you um, may have completed a, a card to ask any additional questions. We will collect those cards or you can provide those cards to us so that we'll have an opportunity to be able to review those and, and respond to them. But I don't know if anyone um, has anything that they want to say. Otherwise, that concludes my presentation. Yes. Okay. Lots of questions. Lots of questions? So what time? Okay. So I think it's probably going to be best to make sure that everyone's question gets answered, that you fill out your question on the, on the contact cards and provide your contact information, your email address, your telephone number, because I would anticipate that there's a lot of questions and we may not be able to get into a question and answer session where everyone is heard. So it would be unfair to start and not be able to get to everyone. So um, this one, I want to get your contact information. But I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll, answer, I'll ask this one. Who is the person or a or group or officials behind this motion? Well, you know, it's really the community because of the events that have occurred in the, in the public that we are aware of in the news where you've had, you know, uh, violence, um, you've had a lot of impacts to neighborhoods. And so really, you know, the board has listened to area. It is Supervisor Solis. This is part of District 1. So as far as is anyone operating uh, Airbnb now out of the law, because the ordinance has not been adopted, then there is no law to enforce as it stands right now. But like I said, with the timeline, we do plan to bring this ordinance to the board in July. And then once it takes effect, which would be about um, you know 60, six months after, then that's when we would be able to begin enforcing the ordinance because we have to have an ordinance to enforce to be able to um, address anyone that is operating a short-term rental. 
So this question says, if the county approves short-term rentals, will a fee be imposed registration process? So there's a registration fee for the host, that's the $914 that's required, as well as the requirement for the host to remit the transient occupancy tax, which I often find is passed on to the, to the guests. The registration fee might be passed on to the guests as well. So, what department will be responsible for enforcement of this ordinance? It's a collective, but T uh, Treasurer and Tax Collector, or TTC, we are the lead department to um, administer the ordinance. And so, depending upon what type of violation or nuisance that's being reported, we would then collaborate with whichever county department that would have jurisdiction over that type of activity. So as far as recourses do we have as neighbors when things are out of control? So again, we have the host is required to provide that, that contact person that's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, part of our, our system that the fee is covering will allow for complaints to be um, filed and also if someone has like, you know, pictures of the activity to just support the uh, complaint that that short-term rental um, system will allow for the complainant to be able to upload pictures in addition to filing their, their um, complaint. Uh, and so, uh, you know, part of the uh, maintaining the neighborhood character, we talked about no littering, we talked about no illegal parking, because in this question, it lists things like trash and weeds and people running up and down the street, cars being crashed onto our street. So again, file the complaint. The host, um, we, we listed the different violations, the monetary violations, as well as, you know, filing a lien. Liens are very um, powerful because, you know, when a lien is filed, it becomes a public record and that gets to people's credit report. Um, so, you know, these are enforcement tools that, that should deter a lot of um, bad acting. So this question, will you be provided with additional funds for enforcement staff? That registration fee, that $914, that covers um, the, the staff that we will be responsible, we will have to hire to carry out the enforcement. The, the treasurer and tax collector will have to hire additional staff specifically designated for short-term rental enforcement, but then we also have our other county departments that we'll be collaborating with. Um, a question about sober living houses. No, this is not part of the ordinance. So again, a question about enforcement and the fire department's role. Um, this is not a permitting, but when it comes to any complaints that you have, there uh, one of the requirements in the ordinance is for um, emergency, you know, exit evaluations, especially for fire zone um, areas. So there are more details in the in the ordinance, but uh, there's no health department requirement because we're just registering. This isn't permitting, this isn't licensing, it's just registering, making it known that you're conducting a short-term rental and then in, you know, carrying out all of the requirements for the, the host responsibility. And then our role as enforcers, if those um, rules are not being adhered to. What is the cost to taxpayers to start the program? The registration fee is what covers the cost of the program. So that registration fee as a host, you might pass it on to the guests that are renting their short-term rental, as opposed to you know paying it out of your own pocket, but that's the, that's the cost for conducting a short-term rental. 
the $914 registration fee. That's an annual fee. And it says, does an ordinance only apply to short-term rental, not like a normal three or six month longer rental lease? It only applies to short-term rentals when it's your primary residence. So if you have uh, another property and you're renting that um, for long-term housing, this ordinance will not apply. Yeah, so there will be an online registration system because this is asking, do you have a state uh, portal? Yeah, computer system. So we will have a short-term rental registration system. That system will also allow for complaints to be filed and for the payment of the registration fee and the remitting of the TLT. So what can we do now? Um, until the ordinance is adopted by the board, we don't have any rights to do any enforcement. But again, we are bringing that ordinance to the board um, hopefully in July. And I know it's been a long term, long time coming, but we are at the at the end of uh, that waiting period, and so we'll be bringing it to the board in July. So hopefully, things um, if you have serious sense, you know situations that occur now, your only recourse at this point is just to um, report that to law enforcement. So if the, again, the requirement for short-term rental is that if it's going to be an unhosted stay, that it's limited to no more than 90 uh, nights per calendar year. So if there's a situation where you as a neighbor, you believe that there's a short-term rental that's being rented for, you know, once we have the ordinance and we can enforce the ordinance, the requirements of the ordinance, that would give you as a neighbor the opportunity to um, file that complaint. Our short-term rental system, you'll be able to, to file your complaint and um, that's something that we would then investigate and enforce. And again, the hosting platform, because most of these short-term rentals will be um, rented through the Airbnb or the BRBO. And so with those hosting platforms, they're looking for they have technology that looks for, you know, uh, they're monitoring the number of nights, they're monitoring the address, they're looking at, you know, all sorts of information that's available to them to help us to enforce the, the requirements once we have an ordinance adopted. And I think that's it. Okay. So our website, if you have, you get home and you think of a question that, you know, didn't come up tonight, don't hesitate to um, go on our, our website. Our email address is, is listed there and you can submit any inquiries and our staff will respond to you. So again, I just wanna thank you for your time and your attention and appreciate um, you sharing this information because we want to get the, get the word out, okay? So thank you again, good night.